Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania, perhaps the most grueling stop on the Jamboree Tour. Not only the heat of the summer, but the equipment on hand rivals that almost anywhere else. Here, tour regulars come face to face with East Coast legends before a hungry crowd of some of the most rabid tough truck fanatics anywhere in the country. From the Bloomsburg Fairgrounds in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania, a a Auto Stores presents the 32nd Annual Summer Four-Wheel Jamboree Nationals. It's time for stop number two of the Tough Trucks Challenge. 20 of the modified Tough Trucks here to do battle and leading the charge into the Keystone State is the Central Ohio Tires Chevrolet of Nick Anderson. One. The event out in Lima against the field of top competitors. And now he faces down a field of some of the Northeast's toughest competitors who will throw everything they can at him. Stay with us. Session 1 starts next. This Back Channel Productions program is presented in part by Monsters Monthly. For up-to-date show and ticket info, articles, event breakdowns, and a wide selection of photo and video galleries, visit MonstersMonthly.com. We will four wheel we drive you wild. wild. The O'Reilly Auto Parts four wheel jamboree roars into the Indiana State Fairgrounds all this weekend, Friday through Sunday. Big, tough, lifted, unstoppable. unstoppable. With shining rides, muddy tires, the tough truck challenge, general tire burnout, the UTD shootout, and lightning fast mud drags. The Bigfoot and the world's top monsters in the general tire monster truck thunder, thunder drag. Shop and save in the huge performance marketplace. Get discount tickets at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Info at fourwheeljamboree.com. Part of the Lucas Oil four wheel jamboree series. Bloomsburg Fairgrounds in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania. We're going to jump right into qualifying session number one of the modified truck trucks. Mike Lippold from the outside. That's the war horse, the red truck, taking on Seamus Conway here in the near lane, and he is checking out on Seamus. Conway going to have to go some, but still qualifying session number one. They get three shots to qualify for the field, and if you remember back to Lyman, they got faster and faster every time they ran the course. Lippold Gonna give us a good look at this track right now. The uh, section that he's coming back through, having come off turn number one of the horse track there, that's called the tunnel where it tightens up. It's an S-shaped track that comes down the front stretch, takes uh, part of the infield there, and then heads out onto turn number one. Lupold gonna lay down a decent time here, it looks like. We'll have to see what the rest of the field is able to do with this track. Again, these are just the first two actual competitive runs of the weekend. Top 16 come back and uh, go into the Eliminator field. Seamus Conway definitely going to have to pick up the pace. A 46-155 will put him in the number one spot for the time being. Conway definitely going to need to be faster tomorrow. Now Nick Anderson taking on Pat Winchester. One and two in points coming into Bloomsburg. Look how evenly matched these guys are now. Winchester will have the inside turn the first time around. They're still about even. Into the tunnel. Still even. This is going to be an awesome qualifying pair to watch this weekend. Side by side, back into the tunnel. A little problem for Anderson. At Winchester, taking the lead with an inside turn back onto the front stretch. Even with 
that bobble. Anderson keeping up with it pretty well and a good launch across the finish line. Both those trucks looked real good, save for that bobble there in the middle of the uh, tunnel. Look at that, a 44 794. It's just qualifying session one. Pat jumping up into qualifying position number one. Nick Anderson not doing too bad as the next pair of trucks heads out to the line. Joey Bates. And we saw flying over the bus out in Pennsylvania earlier this year. He's taking on our buddy Tony Martinez in the Dodge and Bullets Ford earlier today. Tim Howard had a chance to talk to Tony Martinez about some of the things he's done to this truck for the 2019 season. So Tony, we know you did a bunch of changes this past winter. You're still running the 302, but I heard you did some little EFI improvements. Yeah, we went with the EFI this year, the Holly Sniper System. We really changed our engine program around. We're building a lot more horsepower, and it's there when we want it. And it's always there and reliable. If I ever have any problems, I call up Holly, and they help me out right away over the tech line. I had to call them yesterday. My secondaries were sticking. They walked me through it, helped me out. It was great. Um, just everything's really coming around this engine program since I put that on there. It's, I can't say enough about it. Okay. You know? All right. Well, no, I'm really impressed with that. I know it's something new that's on the market. I just started seeing them in magazines and commercials. It's really nice. I've seen a huge improvement in your truck this year. I mean, the throttle response this thing has got is coming out of the hole is, is wow, impressive. I know you've been struggling with a couple other little things, but I wanted to bring attention to this patent pending, mind you, alternator power steering belt safety mechanism that they invented. On here, a lot of guys racing know that alternator belts fall off, you never find them in the mud. Tony has invented a chain that mounts to the block into the frame, so when the belt falls off, it's caught on the chain, you don't have to go searching for a belt. We want some insight on how you came up with such an ingenious thing. I don't know where it came from, it's just one of those things where I think my screwdriver caught it one day when I was working on it in the shop, and I'm like, hey, I like that, I think I'll make something to go with it, and they say, you know, I put a piece of chain on there, and now the belt stays on for some reason, but it's there when I need it, and when you hit some jumps real hard, and everything's going whichever way it wants, and RPMs are just screaming as much as they can, you know, just, that's when they fly off. They go wherever they want to go, and you'll never find them again. Now we can catch them every time. I think it's awesome, man. They got some good filming here. The truck looks like it's coming around. I know you guys are out there laying down some slower times, learning the track. But we wish you the best of luck today, and we hope to come over and uh, interview you on the podium. Thanks a lot. I'd really like to thank uh, Barton Homes, uh, Nova Glass, All Construction, uh, my crew chief, Daddy-O, that's what everybody calls him. Lucky yeah. for enough, I get to call him Dad. Uh, Jocko back home, Ava and Abby, they're a part of my cheering crew, always there for me. and. Uh, Hope we're going to bring home some trophy for him this weekend. Yeah. What about, should we give a shout out to Mark Noto? I mean, I know he's got a big part. He is a Ford guy, so should Mark we say anything Noto. about Mark Noto or what? Mark Noto has always been there for me right from the get-go. We started racing together. You know, I took some time off. I got right back into it, and he never missed a beat. He was always there to help me, and uh, just a good guy all around. Yeah, Mark is a good guy. We miss him out here driving, but it's nice he's around helping everybody out. And even though he's a Ford guy, he's uh, pretty knowledgeable with these things. So. Who those Ford guys? Yeah, I know, but hey, we wish you the best of luck, man. Thanks a lot, Tim. Thank you. It. Give you a little inside story on that interview as Tim was walking away. Tony Martinez, correct me if I'm wrong, he said something along the lines of a $70,000 truck, and you were asking me about a 50 cent piece of chain. Dodging bullets and Purple Rage heading into the tunnel. Joey Bates. Purple Rage a little bit off to the side there. He cut inside. Gonna watch that barricade there in the middle. It's mostly uh, JoJo blocks out there, but there is a concrete barrier right in between those two hills to try to keep these trucks from getting into each other. Bates with a big lead coming back out. Martinez. Just getting a feel for the course right now. I can guarantee you he's going to be a lot faster when he comes back tomorrow. Good run for Joey Bates in Purple Rage. Here comes Martinez, not too far behind again. Qualifying session one, they're still just feeling this thing out. Joey Bates taking position number two on the board. Tony Martinez in fourth as it stands right now. Hey, here's a little chrome from the show and shine area. We'll be right back to Bloomsburg.
Back at the Bloomsburg Fairgrounds in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania, with the Tough Trucks Challenge, part of the 32nd annual a, a Auto Store Summer Four-Wheel Jamboree Nationals. A pair of big guys from the Buckeye State on the line right now. Al Barner in the far lane as the AJ Transmission Pontiac Chevrolet taking on the 68 Ford with the Bowtie Power Plant. That is Travis Stevens, one last shot with the lead headed toward the tunnel. This area over here at turn number one and two is the uh, section of track that I think is really gonna make or break your run. How fast can you get around that loop and back toward the tunnel? Al Barner with the lead coming out. Stevens trying to play catch up. A little bit wide in that corner. He's still gonna lay the power to it. Al Barner laying down an excellent run in the bounty hunter. That should be a great time. We'll see, look at that, 43.905 to take the number one spot, number three going to Travis Stevens, so both of those guys should be happy with the run that they laid down, at least for right now, but know that it's gonna get faster tomorrow now. Out on the line, the Flying Dutchman, Scott Roth, and Lucky 13 taking on a guy that should be familiar to our followers here at Monster Power. That's the wild man, he's been on his head before, Brett Spunenberg and Beer Money. Another member of the Foy Toy Racing Team. Real aggressive pair of runs going right now. Rod, with a fair advantage headed towards the tunnel. You notice these two trucks both fly flatter than some of the others. They're able to get a little bit more air that way, but doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna be going faster. Pretty even right now as they head back into the tunnel. Spawnenberg headed at that jump sideways. Still stayed in and he never wanted to give up. Laying down a wild run right now. Scott Roth with the lead headed towards the finish line. I don't think these are gonna be two of the faster runs here so far, but uh, definitely a solid pair of runs. Spawnenberg will probably like to shave a few seconds off of that time that he just laid down. There you see it, qualifying position number six. We'll go to Scott Roth for the time being. Spawnenberg will land himself in number eight. Up next, a pair of appropriately named vehicles on the outside lane. That's Colin Dorshimer in the no boundaries. Ford, he's taking on Tim Conway in Border Patrol. Another member of the Conway racing family. You saw Seamus a little bit earlier. Should be a pretty good matchup. Pair of Fords on the line in Bloomsburg. Been a while since we've seen either of these two out on the uh, track full time. Colin laying down a good run in the little yellow Ford out of Pennsylvania. Like maybe a little bobble coming out of that uh, right hander, but a real smooth pass through the loop out there. Now back into the tunnel with a huge advantage. He'll come back out of the front stretch. Conway just now making his way through the tunnel. Dorshimer will shoot through to the finish line. There's Conway trying to make up some ground. Way over on the nose. Tim Conway trying to make some tracks right here. And he's in big, big trouble. Tim Conway. Big crash on the front stretch. You can see the... Uh, you can see the uh, right front has gone all the way over to the wall down there near turn number four. Colin Dorshimer laid down the second fastest qualifying run, but it's been overshadowed by this incident on the finish line. Track crew was down there very, very quickly. You can see the fire and rescue. A lot of activity around that window net, but they have uh, I don't see a lot of movement in the cockpit. I don't know if he's maybe hung up in the belts or what, but we would really love to see that black helmet pop out of that driver's side door here in a second. 
see Seamus making his way down track. A lot of concern right now for Tim Conway. Lee Collins with the fire extinguisher. There goes Jeff Lucky. Photographer and fire and rescue, can't forget that. Going to take another look at the uh, run here. We're going to get a comparison of the way these two trucks landed on the finish line because they both went nose down. Dorshimer goes way over on the nose, but truck does basically what it's supposed to do. The front wheels pull it back out. Now Tim Conway comes along, and I can't tell if maybe the frame rails dug in. Was he just that far over? And Well, it's hard to tell. It looks like he may have actually just blown the uh, center out of that rim. And it allowed the frame rails and the uh, front springs to get into the into the dirt and endo that truck. Either way, that was a hard hit to that cage. It looks like the cage held up, but we were way back here by this camera, and we could feel that shake the ground. That was quite an impact. There you see Tim Conway has popped out of the vehicle. Scary, scary few moments there. And look at that, he laid down a qualifying run. I don't know that it's gonna matter. He qualifies in the number nine spot as it stands right now, but uh, that truck is thrashed. Tim Conway walking away under his own power, but with a little bit of help. See if he can get back into this thing. I doubt it, more to come. Going back on the line, and we get back to Bloomsburg. We will four-wheel four drive you wild. The O'Reilly Auto Parts four-wheel jamboree roars into the Indiana State Fairgrounds all this weekend, Friday through Sunday. Big, tough, lifted, unstoppable. unstoppable. With shining rides, muddy tires, the tough truck challenge, general tire burnout, the UTV shootout, and lightning fast mud drags. The Bigfoot and the world's top monsters in the general tire monster trucks thunder drag. Shop and save in the huge performance marketplace. Get discount tickets at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Info at fourwheeljamboree.com. Part of the Lucas Oil four-wheel jamboree series. You see the aftermath of a very scary incident involving Tim Conway, the Border Patrol Ford. Probably won't be back this weekend. That chassis is twisted and bent. Take a look at the standings. As of right now, qualifying session number one, Al Garner on top at 43,905. And then a grouping of uh, 44s, a tight group of 44s, and a 45,280 by Joey Bates to round out the top five. You see Pat Winchester and Travis Stevens up there in three and four, but you notice you don't see in the top five. That's Nick Anderson in the Central Ohio Tire Chevrolet. I don't think that's the way he thought he was going to start his weekend outside of the top five. Usually one of the fastest, but I'm sure he will pick up the pace come Saturday afternoon. Now on the line, Craig Brown in 41. One of the coolest looking trucks on the tour. He's taking on Joe Bates Sr. in the Silver Bullet. Boy, look at that hard hit for Bates. They head toward the tunnel. He's still making good time in spite of that uh, rough landing he just took. He's battling one of the best in Craig Browdy. Another one of these hard running Buckeye bandits. Look at that. Bates is right on Prouty's driver's side door. Losing a little ground, coming back out of the front stretch. But Prouty laying down a good run right now. Big leap over the finish line, almost into the wall goes Bates. Rowdy will take the number five spot. Position number eight going to Joe Bates Sr. The Silver Bullet Ford now on the line. A pair of foy toys, the godfather here in the near lane. That is Jake Nichols in the foy toy. Takes on Scott Martin on the far side. Blue Ford, that's hauling ass. A pair of Broncos.
blue Bronco with the uh, F-150 body on it, but uh, very evenly matched pair of trucks. Nichols making really good time back here. Awesome run into the tunnel. Both of these guys looking real, real smooth. This should be a good set of times. Out onto the front stretch. Look at Nichols flat putting it down the face of the ramp. Big leap across the finish line. They were right there together. Look at that, 43828 takes the number one spot and Scott Martin will go into position number three at a 44500. Now another member of the Foy Toy Racing team, another guy we did not see at Lima, Ohio, that is Paul Hackle in the Swamp Donkey. Black Jeep, He's taking on a uh, legend in uh, tough truck racing. That's John Coss and the Violator. Look at Swamp Donkey getting some hang time. Hackle, another one of these guys that doesn't mind getting on his lid trying to take a win. I mean, I'm sure he minds it, but he's not afraid to do it. Making a nice smooth run right now. I'm not sure how fast the run itself is gonna be when he gets to the finish line, but Definitely getting a good feel for the track. He's way out on cost right now. Good run for the Swamp Dog and another big Foy Toy style launch across the finish line. Cost just now making his way down the front stretch. Not the kind of run that he was looking for. Paul Hackle going to position 12, but he's still in the field. Not the run he was looking for. And then position 17 just outside of the Eliminator field is cost. Now, Thomas Fouts, mad money. Man out of Pennsylvania, he's taking on another one of those big Buckeye boys, John Yoder, the under pressure Jeep Cherokee. It's another truck we've seen get on its top before. Sun's starting to set. This is the last pair of runs this evening in the modified class. And right there, you just saw Yoder take down a barrier. I'm not sure. I believe that'll be a penalty for John Yoder. Fouls making tracks now toward the finish line. A little bit out of shape. He straightens it out. He'll cross the line without uh, any real problems. We'll see what the times are. Between the Ford and the Jeep, that again was the last pair of tough trucks to run this evening. Look, he takes the number five spot, not a bad run at all, 44, 7, 5, 5, and there was indeed a penalty on John Yoder. Now, we'll take another look at that top five, and you can see some big changes. Jake Nichols and Al Varner, they are right there together on the top. Then, Scott Martin, Colin Dorsmer, and Thomas Faust. They have knocked Pat Winchester out of the top five. Our one and two in points are not sitting in the top five. Now, we want to thank you for joining us for this edition of Monster Power. More coming your way from Bloomsburg. There's a lot going on this weekend. We're very, very happy to report that Tim Conway is going to be all right. Unfortunately, though, as you can see from the condition of the truck, he will not be back this weekend. We'll see if Seamus can do him proud and make it up for him in the Modified Tough Trucks Challenge from Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania. We will see you next time here on Monster Power.